Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Hollow by Agatha Christie. This is a Hercule Poirot mystery. I read it in this pan edition. I'm going to go ahead and read you the blurb, then we're going to go through and look at my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Agatha Christie, the acknowledged queen of detective fiction the world over. That's the observer. It strikes me, Monsieur Poirot, that taking it all round, you're far and away the most suspicious character in the case. Hercule Poirot did not like the country. He cared even less for the highly artificial murder scene which greeted his arrival at the hollow. Of all the people by the swimming pool, only one person seemed to be really alive, the man who was at the point of death. Who could have killed John Cristo, and why? Poirot was determined to satisfy his passion for the truth. Now that blurb dramatically overstates how much Poirot is actually in this case, because he's not really in it that much. Uh, we have the introduction here, I like this, uh, for Larry and Dene with apologies for using their swimming pool as the scene of a murder. Uh, first published in 1946. So we have here, uh, someone had once said to him, you must get very tired of these rich patients always fancying themselves ill. It must be so satisfactory to get to the poor, who only come when there is something really the matter with them. He had grinned. Funny the things people believe about the poor, with a capital P. They should have seen old Mrs. Pearstock on five different clinics, up every week, taking away bottles of medicine, liniment for her back, linctus for her cough, aperients, digestive mixtures. Fourteen years I've had the brown medicine doctor, and it's the, the only thing that does me any good. That young, that young doctor last week writes me down a white medicine. No good at all. It stands to reason, doesn't it, doctor? I mean, I've had me brown medicine for fourteen years, and if I don't have me liquid paraffin and then brown pills, uh, we have a gratuitous N-bomb, which I feel is like a little bit too late to be using them, and this is post-Second World War, you know? We get this. Do you remember our squirrel, the one with the broken paw? And we kept it in a cage and it got well. Of course, it had a ridiculous name. What was it now? Chumley Marjorie Banks. Um, and Chumley is from my novels, the detective series. Not, not where I got the name from, but uh, I just like it. This is also a really cool little picture there. I thought this is funny as well. Uh, do you think it'd be a successful? How funny! But you are, my dear. You're an artist. You must be proud of yourself. You can't help being. I know, said Henrietta. A lot of people say that to me. They don't understand the first thing about it. You don't, Edward. Sculpture isn't a thing you set out to do and succeed in. It's a thing that gets at you, that nags at you and haunts you, so that you've got, sooner or later, to make terms with it. And then, for a bit, you get some peace, until the whole thing starts over again. Which I think is true of any art. So here we have the first mention of Poirot, page 78, uh, chapter 11. Hercule Poirot flicked a last speck of dust from his shoes. He had dressed carefully for his luncheon party and he was satisfied with the result. So yeah, don't go into this thinking that there's going to be a ton of Poirot, because there won't be. Uh, this bit tickled me as well, because I think this tells you quite a lot about Poirot's personality and how he sees himself. So, uh, he sighed, enfant, what did they expect him to do? Was he to pretend to believe in this crime? Was he to register dismay, alarm? Or was he to bow to congratulate his hostess? Ah, but it is very charming what you arranged for me here. Really, the whole thing was very stupid. Not spiritual at all. Was it not Queen Victoria who had said, we are not amused? He felt very inclined to say the same. I, Hercule Poirot, am not amused. I like this little paragraph as well, it, it just tickled me. Again, if you're British, you'll uh, appreciate this because of the News of the World reference. David, who preferred the contemplation of an academic past or the earnest discussion of a left-wing future, had no aptitude for dealing with a violent and realistic present. As he had told Lady Angatel, he did not read the news of the world, but now the news of the world seemed to have come to the hollow. And then this is telling of his character too. Uh, murder! David shuddered distastefully. What would his friends think? How did one, so to speak, take murder? What was one's attitude? Bored? Disgusted? Lightly amused? We have this little reference to Poirot's moustache. Um, so, uh, oh, they will be looking. I can assure you of that. Yes, I rather thought they would. She paused, stretched out her fingers on her knee and looked at them, then gave him a swift, friendly glance. Well, Monsieur Poirot, what does one do? Go to Inspector Grange and say, what does one say to a moustache like that? It's such a domestic family moustache. Poirot's hand crawled upwards to his own proudly born adornment. Whereas mine, mademoiselle? Your moustache, Monsieur Poirot, is an artistic triumph. It has no associations with anything but itself. It is, I am sure, unique. Absolutely. I feel like Poirot should have said uh, absolutement there, but never mind. Oh, we get another M-bomb here. It's a reference. Um, but there were so many things in my head. Simmons, you know, and the bindweed in the Michaelmas daisies and hoping Mrs. Medway would make a really rich N-bomb in his shirt. A N-bomb in his shirt? Inspector Grange had to break in. 
Chocolate, you know, and eggs, and then covered with whipped cream. Just the sort of sweet a foreigner would like for lunch. Got some words to live by here. Um, never get mixed up with the police more than you can help. It's painful enough having them in the house at all. This little bit amused me as well. Um, Sir Henry coming back to the house and Edward Angertel coming down here through the woods. The young fellow was up in his bedroom reading. Funny to place to read on a nice day, but he's the indoor bookish kind. So yeah, overall, to be honest, I thought it was an okay-ish book. I mean, Agatha Christie at her worst is better than most at their best, or at least many at their best. And um, I would say this is just mid-tier for her. It's an okay murder mystery. It's one you're going to want to read eventually if you're working your way through all of her books, but definitely not one to prioritise. Overall, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I thought of The Hollow by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments uh, if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.